Hi guys, Andrew here with headphones.com. A lot of you guys have been asking for my take on Linus Tech Tips, the well-known tech-based YouTube platform, getting into the world of headphone measurements. And many of you will of course have seen Critical's excellent video on this topic as well. This is all super relevant to us at headphones.com because we make extensive use of headphone measurements in our evaluations, and we love to get deep into the weeds on these topics. So I guess the question is, how do we feel about this? Or I guess, what does this mean for, you know, the audio and headphone communities? There are a number of things that come to mind when I think about this, but generally speaking, the fact that this is happening, that a major player in the tech YouTube space is getting into audio metrology the right way is a good thing. And when I say the right way, there are very many ways in which this could have been not the right way. My reaction to all of this is to be generally optimistic and essentially endorse what they're doing. So why is that? In my mind, the biggest reason for this is that it has the potential to meaningfully shake up the existing paradigm when it comes to the way tech tubers evaluate headphones and audio products. And I don't mean tech tuber in the pejorative sense here because there's a lot of really great information that comes from these platforms. I mean generally larger YouTube platforms that for the most part cover tech, you know, computer products, gaming stuff, you get the idea. These platforms have a lot more eyes on them than our niche audio-based communities do. And while we're already well entrenched in the headphone measurement world, the use of this stuff in more mainstream reviews is super unfamiliar. Um, and there are exceptions to this. I don't want to make it seem like nobody's doing this. I want to give a quick shout out to my buddy VSG over at uh, Tech Power Up. But for the most part, in the non-audio-based tech world, this is still new ground. So improving the widespread audience familiarity with these kinds of evaluative techniques, I'm talking of course about headphone measurements, is gonna be good for everyone. And beyond that, I expect it'll help make some of what we talk about on this channel more easy to understand, meaning this is actually good for us as well. I can't tell you how many times people have come up to me and say, hey, thanks for your review, but I have no idea what you're talking about with all the squiggly line stuff. So to get a little bit more visibility on that, I think is a good thing for us as well. And here's where I'm gonna get a little bit spicy, and it's probably just because of my personal axe to grind on this topic, but I've long been frustrated by the standard practices of tech channels reviewing headphones where the vast majority of the evaluation focuses on ANC or maybe gaming related features, which while important, it's usually that only a fraction of what gets expressed is dedicated to the sound portion, where all that gets said about it is, you know, oh, it sounds good, or the bass is nice. You know, these types of things are not really all that helpful to people who care uniquely about that aspect of the product. And again, I'm not saying that everybody's doing this, but I think you know exactly the types of videos that I'm taking shots at here. And in some ways, it's why I got into the more niche audio communities in the first place. Maybe you were the same way. So what I'm saying here is that there's a chance this starts a new trend in more mainstream audio evaluations, the same way you commonly see performance benchmarks in the majority of tech-focused YouTube videos these days. And please don't mistake me for sort of equivocating those two things because they are very different, but you get the idea of data-driven or measurement-focused aspects of an evaluation being critically important to those types of videos. And you know, we can do a significant element of that in audio as well. Of course, I'm not saying we shouldn't be cautious. There's always a risk that we might miss the forest for the trees on this stuff. And you don't really have to look far to see that happening. But the reason why I'm not super worried about that in this case is that the people Linus has brought on board to head up their lab are very experienced and competent in this field to the point where I'm quite sure they'll do this right. So again, I hope you can see how Linus getting into this field has the potential to be good for everyone, including us. Uh, we get more eyes on what we're doing here as a result, and people understand what we're doing a little bit better, and headphone metrology is bound to become more well understood in the public consciousness when it comes to how sound quality should be evaluated, at least in my opinion. I'd also really love to connect with them sometime in the near future to nerd out about this kind of stuff, since we're all in the same city, or like close enough basically. And, uh, and of course, you know, DMS, he made Linus cry, so maybe we can find unique and interesting ways of doing that as well. Now with that said, this is me being optimistic. We still don't know yet how they're going to make use of or represent the data, and a lot of their success is going to hinge on that. But again, I'm optimistic this will be done well knowing the people behind it and their experience with all of this stuff. Now, I haven't yet addressed the big thing that everybody's sort of talking about with all of this, and I haven't really talked about it all that much on this channel, although I have mentioned it on live streams a little bit. So let's get into that now, and of course this has to do with the big shiny new head and torso simulator that Linus has bought for their lab, the Brulin Care 5128 or 5128, depending on how you want to say it. Uh, this is billed as the most advanced headphone measurement system, and it is. I want one. Bitterly. But the point I want to make here is that while the 5128 and the new standard it's on represent the cutting edge, it also doesn't invalidate measurements done on the older systems like the Gross 43AG and the KB5000 Anthropometric Pinna and compatible rigs like the 45CA. And at the time of recording this, because this could change, there's also a bit of a trade-off either way you go here. Um, to be clear, I do think the 5128 is better, but it's something we should talk about. 
Um, and it's something that actually everybody doing headphone measurements is most likely aware of as well. So to explain the difference a little bit, let me give you an example. Imagine you took a measurement of a headphone at my eardrum. Then you took that same headphone and measured it at your eardrum. Those two results would look different from one another. And that makes sense because they're taken on two different human heads with different human ears. They're both accurate, they're just different. Because the sound is being impacted differently because we have different ears. Now, barring some additional questions to do with bass, up to about 8 kilohertz, which is where the majority of sound information falls, the differences you're going to see when comparing measurements from the 5128 and the existing Gross systems, like the one that we use, is like that. It's like that difference between two different heads. Above 8K is where the 5128 gives more accurate information, or information that's more representative of an actual human head. The catch here is that while the 5128 is objectively more accurate to the way headphones behave on human heads, an individual head-related transfer function, or HRTF, will vary a lot at those frequencies, at those upper, you know, the treble frequencies up there. So the fact that it's more accurate it doesn't mean it will perfectly predict what we hear. And I think this is why it's taken so long for the more widespread use of the 5128. You know, why spend 50K or however much it's going to cost for the new system when the benefits there are, aren't that substantial. But of course, that doesn't mean I don't want one of these new systems. I definitely do. And I think that eventually we'll probably end up needing to get one as well. I think everybody doing headphone measurements is going to need to do this. Or at least those who want to keep up with the moving industry standard target, I guess. <laughs> um, but the other and I think more important consideration is that the current best and most widely used preference research on sound quality, the Harman research, was done on the older Gross systems and is only compatible with those systems. This means that the reference target we're used to can't be used on the new 5128, or at least not yet. There is potentially a way to extrapolate uh, the existing preference elements to the new system, but it wouldn't be a one-to-one -one representation anyways. So this means that finding a target curve for the 5128 is going to require additional research from whoever is ending up getting one. But even with that trade-off in mind, again, I still absolutely want to get one. And the new standard it's on is definitely going to be the future of headphone measurements for years to come. In any case, I really look forward to what LTT Labs comes up with, and I wish them all the success. There's a chance that they can really pioneer, you know, headphone target curves on this new system. So I'm, I'm very curious to see kind of how they navigate that and what, what sort of the outputs are there. And as I mentioned, I think this has the potential to be a big step forward in how the public consciousness approaches audio evaluations, and I can't wait for the results to start showing up. Anyways, that does it for this video. I'll stop rambling, but thanks for taking the time to watch it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.